Recording in progress. Panduan penggunaan Zoom dan bagaimana cara menggunakan fitur penerjemahan di dalam Zoom. Zoom User Guide and how to use the interpretation feature in Zoom. Izinkan kami dari Virtual Event Organizer Bahasa Global untuk memberikan panduan singkat. Please allow us from Virtual Event Organizer Bahasa Global to give you a Zoom User Guide. Bapak Ibu sekalian mohon dapat memperhatikan panduan dan pengaturan dalam Zoom webinar kali ini. Paling penting untuk Bapak Ibu dapat memastikan telah mengunduh dan menggunakan aplikasi Zoom versi terkini supaya fitur interpretation atau penerjemahan dapat tersedia dengan baik di aplikasi Zoom Bapak Ibu. Ladies and gentlemen, kindly be mindful of the house rules during this Zoom webinar. And most importantly, in order for this interpretation feature to be available in your devices, please make sure that you are using the updated Zoom application. Bapak Ibu sekalian, bila kali ini mengakses Zoom ini menggunakan laptop atau komputer, di kanan bawah layar ada icon bola dunia bertuliskan interpretation. Mohon diklik dan dapat dipilih Bahasa yang ingin didengarkan. Kami menyarankan untuk tidak perlu memute original audio. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're accessing the webinar using a laptop or a computer, on the bottom right of your screen, there's a globe icon says interpretation. Please click and select the language that you wish to listen and we would like to recommend you to not mute the original audio. Bapak Ibu yang menggunakan handphone atau mobile phone, penerjemahan juga tersedia. Di layar utama aplikasi Zoom, di kanan bawah ada tiga titik. Mohon diklik dan dipilih Language Interpretation. Silakan dipilih bahasa yang ingin didengarkan dan terakhir klik dan di kanan atas layar untuk mengaktifasi layanan. If you are accessing the webinar this uh, today using a mobile phone, the interpretation feature is also available. On your Zoom application, on the bottom right of the screen, there's a three dots. Please click and select language interpretation. Please select the language that you wish to listen. And last, don't forget to click done to activate the service. Terakhir, Bapak Ibu sekalian, guna memastikan kelancaran pertemuan hari ini, host dan co-host berhak melakukan mute audio atau stop video para panelis yang tidak sedang berbicara saat mereka tanpa sengaja menyebabkan gangguan terhadap acara. 
Ini dilakukan untuk menjamin suara pembicara dan juru bahasa tetap jelas. Terima kasih atas kerjasama Bapak dan Ibu sekalian. Ladies and gentlemen, please note that to ensure the smooth running of today's meeting, the host and co-host reserve the right to force mute the audio or turn off the videos of panelists who are not speaking that may be unintentionally causing disruption to the meeting. This is to ensure that the audio of the speaker and the interpreter remains clear at all time. We thank you for your cooperation in this matter. Have a productive webinar. Terima kasih. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the demo day of Circular Jumpstart. Small team, huge impact towards smart and sustainable cities through circular practices. We appreciate your online presence and participation. Thank you for tuning with us uh, from Zoom and also from YouTube. My name is Denisa and I will be your moderator of the day. Circular Jumpstart is an incubation program for startups designed to help startups in their infancy succeed by providing mentoring, training, and access to seed funding as well as investments. This two-month program has been attended by 22 experts from various fields in startup development and impact landscape as the mentors for 15 startups participants and two startups observers. This program is targeting climate tech startups, especially those initiated by youths, for they are the key players towards the success of the circular economy in Indonesia. This event is a collaboration between Ecosystem Venture Builder and Green Ration Foundation, brought to you by the continuous support from Kementerian Hukum dan Ham Republik Indonesia, FNF Indonesia, Climate Institute, and Zendit. Before we get started, I would like to invite Jonathan Duffy, the CEO of Ecosystem, for giving the opening remarks. Jody, the time is yours. All right, thank you, Denisha. The honorable esteemed judges for our demo day today, Masano, Mbak Atika, Pak Marcel, Mbak Valencia, Bu Maria, and also Mas Nur, our beloved speaker of the demo day, uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon and welcome to the Circular Jumpstart Demo Day. My name is Jonathan, and it's my privilege and pleasure on behalf of Ecosystem to welcome you here today. We are delighted to have you with us to participate in our Circular Jumpstart Demo Day, so thank you for coming. Your willingness to be here serves as a reminder to us all just how important it is the work to achieve a circular economy in Indonesia. The transition to a circular economy is key in helping cities reach our climate targets and sustainable future. A circular transition can help us build back better towards a more green, resilient, and inclusive city in the recovery from the COVID-19 crisis. Designing for circularity means providing new jobs and opportunity for all communities and citizens. In contrast to the tech make waste linear model, a circular economy is re regenerative by design and aims to gradually decouple growth from the consumption of finite resources. In the spirit of promoting this circular economy implementation in Indonesia, we believe that innovations and entrepreneurship are the way to go. As part of the Green Generation Group that has been working closely with all related stakeholders of circular economy ecosystem, as a company believe that individuals with the right support throughout their innovative and entrepreneurial journey could help to accelerate progress in the road to a truly circular economy and sustainable future for Indonesia. These new models, the creative and imaginative ways of seeing the circular challenges will be able to push forward a more balanced scale of convenience for the public and mass market in achieving a just future through circular practices. That is the background and how we design the Circular Jumpstart program that will help to incubate and launch the 15 participating startups working to solve the circular economy challenge to a new height. The startups have worked across the value chain from designing out pollution, changing consumer behavior, to reinventing the waste management system. Through today's demo day, we hope that the pitch presentation will become the milestone and catalyst for collaboration between multi stakeholder. Uh, currently participating in this event and become the much needed hub for circular economy innovations in Indonesia. Lastly, I would like to first thank our co-organizers, the Green Generation Foundations and IHF Committee 
the supporters of the event, Friedrich Nauman Foundations, the Indonesian Minister of Justice, Climate Institute, as well as Sandit and Bahasa Global Team, and last but not least, the great committee behind the annual dedication to the success of our cohort for every weekend the last two months. My team, uh, Pandu, Ratna, Denisa, Joan, and all team members, I cannot say thank you enough uh, to the run of this event. All in all, I would like to congratulate all the 15 finalists that will pitch today. You are the embodiment of Sekura Jamsat motto, small team, big impact. Towards smart and sustainable cities through Sekura practices. Without further ado, let me conclude my welcoming remarks today, and please enjoy the highly anticipated presentations and pitch from all the 15 finalists. Thank you. Thank you, Jody, for the wonderful remarks. I know that you cannot wait any longer to witness the presentation from the 15 startup finalists of Circular Jumpstart. Before we go further, um, I want to see how many of you here are on Zoom this afternoon. Oh, I think it's over 100. Okay, um, now what I'd like you to do is split the please hit the reaction buttons uh, on your Zoom. Uh, that best describes your feelings today. If you feel wonderful, you can uh, choose the heart or the clap or the thumbs. I'd like to see some of that. Okay, now I will call up uh, the startup names one by one uh, to introduce them to you. Uh, you can help me uh, show some support and love for them uh, when you're, when the startup that you're supporting uh, his name is being called. You can uh, participate by giving some reactions. So there's Coin Pack, Bell Society, Revelware, Pasar, Turtle Safe, Litecon, Kiosk, Rob Reese, Plus Street, PWFT, Surplus, Ecoplast, Grow Cycle, last but not least, Diola. Thank you. Those are the 15 participants or the, the startup finalists. Now I'd like to introduce you to uh, our wonderful panel of judges. Before we really go into our main agenda, I think it's best for the, the audiences to know who will be judging this wonderful session. We have six judges coming from different backgrounds, different expertise, and but definitely all for the same mission. It's for the climate tech startups, sustainability, and circular economy. I think we can see them here. Hello, everyone, judges. Good afternoon. Hello, good afternoon. <laughs> Hello, very nice to have you here virtually. Very Thank hopeful that we can see each other, you know, in person, but I think this is good enough for now. Okay, so we'd like to introduce the first uh, judge. Uh, there's Marcel Newton, the Partners of Capital for Development Partners, or C4D. Hello, Marcel. Good afternoon. Hello. Good afternoon. How, How are, are you? you doing today? I am good. Thanks. Thanks for having me here today. <laughs> Thank you, Marcel. So, Marcel is also one of the, the mentors uh, in the previous uh, modules that we have in the past two months. So how do you feel, Marcel, about today? Yeah, excited. Uh, I was surprised by last uh, the last module where I participated to really see a cohesive group and a lot of enthusiasm uh, from both your team and obviously uh, the companies. So I'm looking forward to it today. To yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think Marcel would like to see if some of his knowledge is being implemented by the by the uh, finalists. <laughs> okay, thank you, Marcel, for uh, attending today's session. Now I would like to invite the second judge. Uh, there's Benedicta Atika or Ma uh, Atika, the Impact Investment Lead of Angel Network Indonesia. Ma Atika, hello. Hi, how are you? How are you, Ma Atika? How do you feel today? Good. Are you excited? Yes, I'm really excited to see everyone here. So thank you for having us. Thank you. Matika, if I can ask just one question, we, uh, one quick question to you. What do you expect from the participants? <laughs> well, I think um, it's going to be a fun session where I hear like so many innovation. So yeah, really excited to hear more from the cohorts, especially based on the previous sessions that we met. I see. I think Bartika is expecting, you know, some progress from the last time they see each other with the finals. Thank you, Bartika, for the short and brief uh, 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 introduction. Now I would like to introduce the third uh, judge, 
Mbak Valencia Dea, the investment manager of Circulate Capital. Hello, Mbak Valencia. Hello. How are you today? Good. How are you? We're pretty good. We're excited. We're also a little bit nervous <laughs> because we've been together with the finalists for uh, the past two months. Now we'd like to see how they can perform uh, in front of the judges. Also, one quick question from um, Mbak uh, Valencia. Should I call you Mbak Valencia or Mbak Dea? Valencia is fine. Valencia is fine. Okay. From from your perspective as uh, investment manager, what do you really want to see from a startup or a climate tech startup? Um, I think one is like different ways they tackle the issues. I would like to see, you know, because like there's long value chains here. I would like to see like different solutions across the value chains and also like the economic sense of it, the business models that's working. All right. Thank you, Mbak Valencia, for some, you know, this can be helpful for the finalists, I think, when they present. It's like cues. Thank you so much, uh, Mbak Tika. Uh, sorry, Mbak uh, Valencia. Now I'd like to introduce our fourth judge, Ibu Maria R. Nindita Radiati, PhD, the Executive Director of CECT and Founding Director of CSR Sustainability, Trisakti University. Hello, Ibu. Hi, Ma. <laughs> Hi, how are you doing, Bu? I'm good, uh, thanks, but it's just a bit cold here today. Oh. <laughs> if I may know, where are you uh, joining us from, Bu? Oh, I'm uh, in between uh, Sydney and Canberra. So, in between Sydney and Canberra. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely not in Jakarta, yeah, Bu? <laughs> no, <laughs> not yet. <laughs> yeah. Really appreciate that you are tuning in, even from different continent. Thank you for joining us, Ibu. Also, one quick question for uh, Ibu, Ibu Nita. Uh, from the sustainability perspective, maybe, what would you like to see from the startups yeah. here? So I think uh, they, their projects are really amazing, yeah? Uh, but they also need to realize that in running their uh, business, uh, they need to integrate sustainability into their business operations. And then they also have to have a unique a sustainable value proposition. Uh, in that way, they can achieve a sustainable business or business sustainability. Ah, thank you. Very interesting insight from the from the sustainability uh, perspective. Thank you so much, Ibunita. Very much looking forward to your scoring. Yes, it will be sure. a secret, but very much looking forward to it. Thank you, Ibu. Now I'd like to welcome our fifth judges, um, Masnor Media from Zendip, the business development lead of Zendip. Hello, Masnor. Hello. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How are you doing today? Good, good. I'm kind of excited. Very excited, yeah. Uh, are you tuning in from home, from office? Probably not office, right? Uh, yeah, 100% from home, actually. <laughs> okay, 100% from home. It's 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 the regulation now, yeah, Mas. Yeah. So thank yeah. you so much, Mas, Nor, for uh, supporting us in this event. If I also may ask one quick question from uh, for Mas uh, Nor, from different uh, Zendit is a different kind of you know uh, business or different industry. What would you like to see? Like, what kind of collaboration are you interested in seeing from our startup finalists? Yeah, I think that's pretty much good questions, right? So, and also I think uh, collaboration is a key uh, in nowadays, right? So all businesses, I think we cannot survive if we are doing everything alone. So I think, yeah, by doing the collaboration, I think we can do much bigger, much better for everything. And for this kind of verticals from our point of view, right? So this is something that I think quite important from for, for the features because we are care about everything related to the health and climates right now. Oh, everything's related to climate, kata Mas Nur. Yeah, thank you so much, Mas Nur, for uh, the, the wonderful statement. I think it will be very helpful also for the participants to kind of, you know, make a guess in what Mas Nur will be interested in. Thank you so much once again, Mas Nur. Now I would like to welcome the last but not least uh, of the judges in the panel. Please welcome Mas Bijaksana Junero Sano, the founder of Generation Group. Hello, Masano. Selamat siang. Hello. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you. Thank you, Masano, for joining us. I also would like to ask one question to Masano. Please, Denisa. <laughs> is it um, why is it important for a climate tech startups 
uh, to succeed nowadays? Look, guys, all, all of the participants, all of Indonesia who hear this, the speed of environmental destruction until today still faster compared to the speed of the solution itself. So we need to think more clear and work more strategically and clever enough that startup will create a lot of snowball effect. Yeah, so they can create a change while sustain themselves. They can create green jobs and they can offering the solution. So that's why currently Generation Indonesia investing ourselves how to help build more eco startup climate tech startup in indonesia to meet the target of indonesia itself on reducing the carbon or even to restoration our environment so very important denisha thank you mas sano it is very important indeed and this is also one of the reasons why we're making this event happen because we realize the importance of having um, um climate tech startups especially uh to because they're the key players in the industry yeah masano yeah i think they're the keys of it okay so thank you so much uh, masano and thank you again for um the, the judges panelists thank you for coming here thank you for your contribution very much looking forward to the uh to to your um perspective and your scoring uh during the presentation now i would like to move forward to our main agenda but before we go you know directly to the main agenda or to the presentation i think i will do a little just a little throwback so these five uh this 15 startup finalists uh they have been uh learning together with us practicing together with uh in this program for the past two months so over nine modules covering various topics from business confessing, finance, and even managing early team. They've been learning it together from um, A to Z, we can say that. And they've been learning from 26 mentors of experts. I think I'm pretty sure some of the mentors are here. Uh, I would like to take this moment to thank the, 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 the mentors for your time and insights and contribution to the success of our event. Uh, I think, I believe that it will be a very useful um, knowledge for our startup finalists, and I'm pretty sure they're going to implement it and they're going to um, reflect it on the pitch deck they're going to show us just an, a little bit more. Now, um, I would like to explain some ground rules before we proceed. So there will be 15 startups uh, presenting their pitch decks. Each startup will be represented by one speaker. Each startup will be given one minute to screen their introduction video and five minutes to present uh, their pitch decks. There will be a timer on screen. Uh, it will be a countdown for five minutes to keep the time on track. And then there will be no Q&A session between the judges and the participants. Uh, the scoring will be based on seven um, parameters. The first one is the relevance and ideas. The second is the social and environment uh, environmental impact. The third is the technical or product feasibilities. The fourth is the potential and industry fit. The fifth is the market desirability. The sixth is the business viability. And the last one is the presentation delivery. Judges deliberation and decision is an absolute decision and is not negotiable. Now I would like to go directly to the moment that we've all been waiting for. I would like to present the first uh, startup finalist. Please welcome CoinPack.
we are facing the curse of tiny plastic packaging called sachet that is fueling our waste crisis. Over 800 billion sachets were sold worldwide, enough to cover Earth's surface, and nearly 100% of them ends up polluting in our environment. This is mainly caused by the linear business model of FMCG companies that they rely upon. My name is Bintang. I'm the director of CoinPack. And today I'm going to show you how CoinPack solves this problem. Next. CoinPack is the pioneer of returnable and reusable packaging solutions for FMCG companies and consumers that delivers daily needs such as home, personal care products, food products, and beyond without waste. I'll show you how it works. Next. We supply FMCG with our reusable packaging that is trackable and can be used up to 20 times. FMCG will fill the products at their site. We will, distrib we will distribute the products to our point of sale networks consisting of warung stores, peer-to-peer -peer sellers, and also West Bank communities. We also sell these products through our online store. Consumers can purchase these products through their preferable channels and return the empty bottles to the point of sales or directly to us by a free pickup service. They will be rewarded with incentive for this new habit. We will clean, we will collect and clean the return bottles and send them back to FMCGs for refilling. This way, we prevent single-use sachets from being produced in the first place. Next. So we ensure that we create a solution that benefits all of the stakeholders. For the FMCG companies, they can accelerate their sustainability goal achievement and penetrate new market through our community-based channels. For the point of sales networks, they can get more loyal consumers due to incentive scheme, and also they can get up to 15% income increase monthly. And for the end users, they can get superior packaging compared to Sachet. It provides uh, it provides those control, it prevents leaking, and it also looks nice inside your home. They can also get 10 to 20% savings on each purchase. Next. So to, to give you the size of the market, we are targeting 6 million FMCG packages sold in Jabodetabek to be purchased by environmental warrior and price conscious consumers through our channels per year. Next. So we have validated this solution in the market through our pilot since last year in Jakarta and Depok. We have sold more than 3,200 packages with 63% repeat rate from the consumers and 70% of the bottles are returned to us to be clean. And we have more than 400 loyal based consumers in Jakarta and Depok with more than 750 transactions. And this number is, this number is still growing till date. Next. So how do we make money? Our first model is packaging as a service. We charge FMCG at 15% of the distributor price for using our reusable packaging. And then we capture margin seven to 10% from distributing the products to our POS networks and also selling them directly to our consumers. This way, we make sure that we create profitable and sustainable business model. Next. So who are we? Our team is perfect mix between impact entrepreneur, myself, operations, sales, finance, and also uh, creative experts. Together, we made a great team. We push this business forward. We are also backed by Envy, a global social startup studio based in Rotterdam, and also Alpla, world leader packaging innovation in Austria. We are also working with two big FMCG companies, Nestle and PNG, as our clients. So why are we here? Next. We are fundraising 450,000 US dollars to be able to expand our packaging portfolio to develop smart drop points and also to, to automate our cleaning facility next year. This way, we will be able to onboard more FMCG and more brands. Then we can sell 11 million bottles and generate 4.6 million US dollar revenue in 2025. By this scenario, we will break even already in 2024. Next. So finally, we can avoid 130 million sachets in total in 2025. This is equal to the area of 40 soccer fields. Indeed, a huge impact. Next. We need you. Together, we can inspire the market for this reuse solution. Thank you very much.
Thank you so much for the wonderful presentation, Bintang Ekananda from CoinPack. Now I would like to proceed to the second startup finalist. Please welcome Bell Society. Bell Society is a biometric company that's found with the idea of combining science, art, and nature. We partner with farmers, brand, designers, and scientists to create a new sustainable material called micelle. Bell Society uses bacteria to produce sheets of cellulose that is non-toxic, strong, and engineerable. It could be colored, grown, stitched, and grown accordingly to the shape that we want. Our goal is to create a material that could be used for everyone, reducing waste while providing a new, unique experience for you to touch and feel. It's time for us to change how we produce things, make it better. You are the future. We'll help you shape it. Hello, uh, good afternoon everyone. My name is Arka, I'm the founder of Bell Society. Uh, Bell Society is a company that produces sustainable material that convert waste into asset. Next. So the problem that we're facing right now is that Indonesia only produces 5 million pieces of leather. Well, it needs 20 million pieces of leather each year. Next. Uh, if we want to increase our production, we have to grow our, uh, we have to face these three problems. The fact that the leather industry used toxic chemicals in production, highly inefficient, and it took long time to produce. Next. Our current solution are synthetic leather, which is made from plastic, reliant on fossil fuel to produce, and it's also create waste. It cannot be degraded. Next. There's also the problem in food waste. About 1.3 billion tons of food waste are being thrown away each year. Next. And then also in the fruit industry, there are about 45% that we produce are being thrown away simply because it was really shop or rot. It has nutrition that we can convert. Next. Wasting food equals wasting energy, water, lands, and time that we use. Next. So here at Bell Society, we produce missile. We convert the unused part of fruits into sheets of cellulose that can be used as a sustainable material. Next. This is how we produce it. So we use bacteria. We wait for them to ferment, and then we harvest the missile and we sell it into brands. Next. It has leather-like textures. Next. It is also strong, flexible. We can shape it into many kinds of things. Uh, it's also strong. We have already tested 500 newtons of strength. Next. And it's also colorful. We can uh, color it into any kinds of color that we want. Natural. Next. It's also biodegradable. It only took three months for it to degrade. Next. And it's also engineerable. We can make it waterproof and we can use any kinds of fruit waste to produce it. Next. Uh, it's also too rapid process to produce it. Only two to four weeks to produce. Next. And uh, in comparison to sheep's leather and also synthetic leather, it is uh, as strong and maybe a little bit uh, cheaper than the sheep's uh, leather. Next. Uh, our main products are missile right now, but we also sell fashion accessories. Next. So we generate revenue by selling uh, the products itself to customer and also partnering with brands to make sustainable product for them. And also partner with people who wants to create place for them to, pro uh, to convert their waste into sheets of leather. Next. And also, it is a target market. So, what leather in industry is valued at 93 US billion dollar. Indonesia is about 4.16, and we target the SMEs, which is 60%. So, it's valued at 2.5 US billion dollar. Next, this is the landscape competition. So, we position ourselves as something that is affordable and also sustainable. We convert lots of waste and also sell it at, uh, at a price that is also affordable for people to use. Next. We are, our goal is to convert fruit waste all over Indonesia, creating sustainable product with many kinds of brands. Next. This is our traction. So we started December 2019. We currently uh, can produce 50 meters squares of missile per month. Last year, we produced about $6,000. And we currently can convert about 100 kilograms of waste each year by partnering with farmers. Next. This is the four local brands that we are currently prototyping. We can, you can guess what kind of brand is this. Next. <laughs> And this is limited to scale, so we can make it any anywhere and also any size by using the medium that we use. Next. Uh, this is the product that we create. We have already made classic shoes, sneakers, then the right is also our production size. Next. This is also the picture of our production site, and the right is uh, another derivative products that we are currently uh, producing right now. Next. 
we believe that sustainability could be your gate to global market by using sustainability. We believe that local brand can reach sustainable market because it's the trend right now. And uh, we, we hope that we can partner with them. Next. We're looking for partners in material production, material implementation, and also distribution locally and globally. Next. This is our partners. Right now we are partnering with LPK ITB, Java Pranger, Kopi Tilu. So we partner with farmers in Pangalengan. Uh, so we take the waste and make it into missile. Next. This is uh, the team. So my name is Arka. I'm the founder, Bachelor of Biology ITB. There's also Semeru, CEO, by management, and also Taufik as a designer and marketer. Next. So we believe that uh, science should be implemented by using art and also technical abilities. Uh, thank you. Hope that we can collaborate soon. Thank you so much, Arka from Bell Society for the presentation. Now we'd like to move to the third finalist. Please welcome Reva Ware. Hi everyone, whether you realize it or not, but the truth is, humans are suck. My name is Randy, and I welcome you to your journey into the ERP 4.0. Next. As I mentioned, humans are sucks. It's because we simply doesn't meant to do the job which demands accuracy, consistency, and repetition. That is why, next. In 2020, Indonesia supply chain lost around 184 trillion rupiah. This amount of money is generated not only by corporates, but also by SME business as well. Next. So, what is the solution regarding all of this? Ladies and gentlemen, I proudly introduce you next. Our Revolware ERP. It is the ERP for Industry 4.0 Revolution. So universal that it can be applied not only to corporates, but also to SME businesses. Next. We divide our features into three classification, which is logistics, management, and finance and tax. We believe those are three core activities in every business. If our client adopt our ERP, I believe they can escalate their business activity productivity and efficiencies. Next. So what makes our product different from the other? While while the other's ERP provider only thinks about the corporate solution, we also think about the adoptions for SME. Of course, there's also another company who thinks similar, like Odo. However, their data input is being done manually by human, but we are different. Our data input is being done automatically by our very own technology. Its name, next, is FRID. It is Basically, the evolution of barcode and RFID. So cheap, but as robust as RFID. It is possible to make it so much cheaper than the RFID because it comes from graphene, which we synthesize from the recycled plastic waste. Next. Our current adoption, so far, there are more than 600,000 RFID tags already deployed lively in Toyota groups, and also, we already got adopted in another Indonesia high-end manufacturer company like Denso, Isuzu, Komatsu, you name it. Next. This is the example of our automatic input. As you can see, there are four clips, four clip, which brings so many boxes with RFID tech, all of it being read simultaneously by our reader. And the output 
they can check it on the screen. That is why we generate our revenue, not only by our software, but also by our hardware, which is Reader and Revel Inc. to produce the FRI tech itself. Next. I believe we have a huge market size in the world because we got the accumulation of ERP, ERP for SME, barcode, and RFID. However, in our first step, we aim to be the market leader for Indonesia, which has 20% of the market shares. To make it happen, we got next. Our marketing strategy, which based on our segments, the SME, which will be focused on inbound marketing, SEO, and marketing automation, and corporate segments that will be starts by Toyota and its 38 supplier for pilot project, and then we go all the way to scale our business up. Next. That is why for this round, we aim to raise 350K US dollar that will be allocated to R&D instruments to mature our products, our working capital for reaching the corporate segments and go to market strategy to reach our SME segments. Next. We believe we can make it happen because as you can see on the slides, we already proven ourselves to excel in the innovation, quality, hardware, and software. Next. At the moment, we already halfway of our milestones to reach our goals. We already got endorsed by Indonesia Ministry of SME, which is Backraft. We already got command info invitation for FGD for Indonesian IoT Roadmap. And we already got countless of invitation of international conference, like in Riyadh, Singapore, and Taiwan. I believe we have the skill. I believe we have the will. What we need right now is a chance to accelerate ourselves. Next. So thank you everyone for your attention. Thank you, Randy from Rivalware Technology. Now I would like to welcome the next startup finalist. Please welcome Pasar. Hi, my name is Carolina. Most of my days I spend it in front of my laptop. During my free time, I like to go hiking. But it's not every day. I don't have room to store my hiking gears. Mm, aha! There is Pasar. I can simply pick the things I need to borrow from there and just choose the most suitable subscription plan for me and just check out. Voila! Now I can borrow up to 5 things at once in a month. And I can always change the other things within the same month. Well, see you on the trail! Good afternoon, everyone and judges. I'm Carolina, you saw from the video, and I'm the co-founder and COO of Pasar, a sharing economy platform for pre-owned goods. In 2010, out of high school and suddenly living in another country, I was put in a situation where I have to be smart in managing finances and planning my purchases. From kitchen goods, small household furniture, to Christmas presents, and many others. It was not long before I figured I could get those goods for a much more reasonable price by thrifting. So since I moved back to Jakarta, continuing my habit has been hard. I cannot find a centralized place that can provide a good quality pre-owned items with reasonable prices and easy access. Next. Remember this Toy Story movie? Young Andy liked to play with his toys and always brought them wherever he went. Next until he grew older and felt that he didn't get much out of it anymore. Passing those toys to the children who would play with it would give more meaningful experiences to them. In Toy Story, that was Bonnie, the little girl in the picture. Not only we are used to with impulsive buying behavior of owning goods, but with those behavior comes waste. Next. Indonesia is the fourth highest e-waste producer generating 6.8 million tons of plastic waste annually and 470,000 tons of textile waste. For some of us, we see these numbers and it means nothing because it doesn't affect us directly. We can be blinded. But I want to invite you all to think about yourself and your possessions. Next. Do you have old goods that you don't use anymore, but you still keep them because you might need it someday, just in case? like your old Nokia or Blackberry, maybe a coffee machine or inline skate 
that you don't use anymore because of temporary excitement or just to follow TikTok trends. These goods can give more meaningful experiences to other people than to you, to other bonnies. Next. Introducing Pasar. We provide channels for people to give a new home for their possessions with a goal to prolong the lifespan and value of items and delay them as long as possible from hitting the landfill. Next. In our business model, we acquire pre-owned goods from individuals, groups, or organizations. Then we put those goods up for rental and sale. 65% of our total revenue will be from the rental through subscription model with tiered fee structure. Next. In the initial stage, we want to target post high school students and homemakers in greater Jakarta with income per household above the minimum line. They need more temporary goods to support their projects, entertainment, or even daily activities. As we grow, we plan to target the larger market to further make waves in disrupting the purchasing behavior. Next. So by now, you might be wondering, why Pasar? We already have a lot of different e-commerce and marketplace platforms, but there are not many that focus on product life extensions, which provides environmental impacts. At the end of the day, it is not the goods that we want to collect, but it is the experiences and create them through using those goods. Next. Today, we are seeking 800 million rupiah for initial investment that will provide support for human resources, platform development, and acquiring inventory. With that, we expect to generate 7.5 billion rupiah in 18 months, comprising of 25,000 transactions. In this small women-led team, we believe in the quality of user experiences through good governance and risk management. Next. And we believe that adaptation to a new habit from strategic communication. With these backgrounds and nine years experience, passion and activism on environmental issues, and with your support, we are confident to enable conscious purchases as a norm. Pasar is a hassle-free one-stop shop of pre-owned items where we adopt direct-to-consumer model to improve customers' experiences and ensure quality of our goods for the purpose of continuing its utilization. Next. So, who is ready to join us in disrupting and revolutionizing shopping behavior? Create stories to tell, not stuff to show. Thank you. Thank you so much, Carolina from Pasar. Now we would like to welcome the next startup finalist. Please welcome Turtle C. Creating a plastic waste is easy. Plastic from your hands to a pouch. Toilet cleaner, glass cleaner, Cleaning with Turtle Safe is definitely easier. Formulate it with natural ingredients and package with biodegradable material. It is compact, affordable, and creates no plastic waste. So choose your easy cleaning. Hi everyone, my name is Irene and here at TurtleSafe we want to see the world without plastic waste by simplifying cleaning industry. Next, 99% of household cleaning products are retailed with plastic packaging and this plastic will take more than our lifetime to degrade. And yes, we do have cleaning product refill solution currently available on the market. However, this solution is only accessible by customer in Jabodetabek. Next, Turtle Safe comes here with a vision to democratize access to eco-friendly cleaning products so housewives from Sabang to Maroke can have access to pollutant-free cleaning products. Next, Turtle Safe provides a range of household cleaning products from hand soap, dishwashing to toilet cleaner in form of effervescence tablet. Our cleaning tablets are compact and small. It can be delivered easily nationwide. It's affordable. Each tablet costs 10,000 rupiah and also produce no waste. It is formulated with natural ingredients such as coconut surfactant and packaged with biodegradable material. Next. This is an example of our hand soap cleaning tablet. 
each clean tablet is equal to 200 milliliter hand soap. It is really simple to use. We just have to fill our cleaning bottle with water, dissolve the tablet, and hand soap is ready to use. Next. Here's our early adapter, millennial age rational living housewives who reside outside Jabodetopic and have start adapting eco-conscious lifestyle, which means they understand the danger of plastic waste and actively looking for a better eco-friendly products. Next. From the market survey that we conducted to 120 respondents in five big cities outside Jabodetopic, we observe a growing trend of sustainability. More than 60% of our respondents bring shopping back to grocery, use reusable drinking straw, and bring their own drinking bottle when outside. This is a conclusive evidence that housewives has a strong desire to reduce their usage of product with plastic packaging. Next. We manufacture and will launch our products in 2022. We will retail our cleaning tablets with 50% gross profit margin to 10,000 housewives with annual, average annual basket size of 240,000 rupiah to get a revenue of 2.4 billion rupiah. We will retail our product through marketplace but slowly distribute it to retail shops to ensure our product can be reached easily by our customer. Next. Obviously, great potential of turtle safe is still really huge since the total household cleaning market in Indonesia is 91 trillion rupiah. Next. From all the cleaning tablets that we sold in 2022 together, we can prevent the usage of 8.4 tons of plastic entering and polluting our ecosystem. Next. Our competitor is still dominated by multinational companies such as Unilever and Wings Group. However, with the advantage of eco-friendly and affordable cleaning products that can be accessed anywhere, we believe there will be most, more housewives trying Turtle Safe. Next. We continuously conduct product research and development to make sure we deliver the best cleaning performance and uh, stays relevant to our customer. We also perform in-house manufacturing to ensure product confidentiality and high standard of our products. And also we're in the process to secure a formulation patent for our products in Indonesia. Next. Our super team consists of highly committed and enthusiastic individuals who have a strong passion in sustainability. All of us has a fast experience in business, finance, manufacturing, operational, and research to achieve our vision, democratize access to eco-friendly cleaning products for all. Next. We also have three advisors on board to continuously support us in finance, general business inquiries, and help us maintain our startup dynamic. Next. We currently looking for a research partner to develop our product into the best eco-friendly clean product available here in Indonesia. Thank you for listening to our pre presentation and together we can prevent more plastic polluting our nature. Thank you. Thank you so much, Irene, for the wonderful presentation. Now I would like to move forward to the next set of finalists. Please welcome Lycon. Setiap tahun, jutaan ton residu abu batubara telah dihasilkan dari pembakaran batubara untuk kebutuhan energi listrik. Di sisi lain, ada ratusan hektar lahan subur yang hilang diambil setiap tahunnya karena diolah menjadi bata merah demi menunjang industri dan pembangunan. Demi menjaga kelestarian bumi, kami memiliki langkah yang tepat untuk solusi yang ramah lingkungan dan ekonomis. SCI, bersama kita. Dengan memanfaatkan Fly Ash, kami telah berhasil memproduksi Litcon Bata Ringan sebagai pengganti Bata Merah. Dengan Litcon, kini proyek konstruksi menjadi lebih bersahabat dan ramah lingkungan. Karena kami percaya, tidak ada limbah yang tidak berguna. Mari bergabung bersama kami demi mewujudkan bumi yang lebih hijau. Look around your house. Most likely, your house will built using clay bricks. I am Mashuri from SCA, 
We strive to make eco-friendly buildings materials from industrial waste. Next, we face two significant problems. And the first problem is 9.7 million tons of residue is generated from power plant in 2020, and only 1% of them was upcycled. 99% of them has gone to landfill. If this residue like fly ash is not utilized, it could contaminate water, land, and in turn affecting the health of those living nearby power plant and its surrounding community. The second problem is that demand created in housing backlog has been increasing and therefore the demand for housing material such as clay brick is, uh, is rising. Clay brick is seen as the cheapest option to build a house. However, clay brick uses a lot of topsoil and topsoil is the most fertile parts of our land. Over exploitation of topsoil reduces land for agriculture. Next. SJE is here to propose Litecon as a solution. In the market, there are already sand-based aerated autoclave blocks, but we are first to use the fly ash as the main ingredient. In 2021, Ministry of Energy and Minerals, together with Ministry of Environment and Forestry, have declared in PP number 22, year 2021, that fly ash and bottom ash are no longer considered as B3 waste and had required fly ash and bottom ash to be managed by the companies that produce it. With our innovation, our AAC block uses 68% of fly ash, whereas usual AAC blocks or light bricks uses sands as the main ingredient. With this innovation, we are able to provide end products that are cheaper, 30% cheaper than the competing products. Next. The prospect of our product is huge with a total addressable market as 113 trillion. And we aim to focus to penetrate market in North Sumatra and Aceh with 200 billion rupees of potential. Next. We strongly believe that we would be able to achieve profit of $1 million per year as we make profit of 20 cents per block with selling price of 55 cents per block and this is only counting the market in North Sumatra and Aceh. Next, we are able, we are one of the few companies that are, that have a permit granted and manage to uh, get the permission to manage all industrial waste by the Ministry of Environment and Forestry. And we also have partnered up with big companies such as Sinamas Oleochemicals and Samata Groups to manage and upcycle their fly ash. Next. We believe we have a very unique value proposition to our various stakeholders. The first stakeholders is our supplier, the manufacturers that are the power plants. Basically, we help them upcycle the industrial waste. And to construction companies, we help them save steel structure costs and also time to install products because Litecon is lighter, bigger, more durable, and easier to install. To environment, we help reduce usage of topsoil and also reduce the carbon dioxide produced associated with clay brick production. And to end users, Litecon will provide longer durability and energy preservation, and also better soundproofing qualities on its building. Next. This is a simple comparison between clay bricks and Litecon. And what I can say is Litecon is on a different leak. Next. These are the benefits of using Litecon. It's a pliable material, so it's easily maneuverable. And also, we have tons of other benefits. Next. This is our chart showing the environment impact that can be reduced by Litecon. Next. This is our team, our super team. Iwan Tirta is our CEO who has been in waste management industry for more than five years. And our COO who had been in, uh, in brick industry for more than 20 years. And myself who had been in um, in the industrial distribution and marketing for more than five years. Next. SGE was built upon the experience of a successful company that has been acquired by Tanang Jaya Group, and we have ran the pilot plant that is able to produce 1 million blocks per year. And next, we need 200,000 USD to expand our production to 2.5 million per year, and we will gradually grow production line with the running cash flow. And next. Thank you, and let us together change waste into eco-friendly building material. Thank you so much, Masuri, for the presentation.
Now, before we go into the 10 minutes break, I would like to welcome, please welcome Kios. Sentuh. Ini Ibu Siska. Hobinya dia belanja. Kita transfer kok, Papi. Gue emang minta. Bu, bu, bu. Atuh, gak muat di situ sampahnya, Ibu. Hmm. Bu, apa tuh? Disuruh sentuh aku. Kayaknya boleh dicoba deh. Sentuh, sentuh. Eh, jadi ringan. Ya, jadi berat lagi deh. Coba sentuh lagi, Bu. Ada apa ya? Wah, saking hematnya bisa beli emas. Wah, sentuh lagi, Bu. Nah, pesan di kios udah gampang. Cepet lagi. Sampai banget deh pokoknya. Udah berasa kayak ratu banget ya sih? Tenang, ini semua bukan mimpi. Kalau kalian, refill di kios. Gini caranya. Hello everyone, I'm Darina from Kios. Next. So the background is, me and my team are from Jakarta. And in Jakarta, there's a really emerging issue of plastic waste. So we generated 2,000 tons of plastic waste daily, and that is in Jakarta alone. It is harmful, space consuming, and definitely costly in the process. That 2,000 tons is as heavy as 500 Sudirman statues and only 12% of them gets to be recycled. That's upsetting. And because of that, Indonesian government mandates manufacturer to produce 30% less plastic packaging in five years. So we see this as an opportunity to close the tap of plastic production at its source from the product that we daily use. Next. And thus, Kios. Kios is a refill as a service solution, turning daily products refillable, such as soap, beverages, cosmetics, and beyond. Next. So we have the competitive advantage having our technology approved by the manufacturer, or what, what we call it FMCG, in which we all collaborate with Algramo that has been proven this concept in Chile for over eight years. And so our dispenser machines are uh, uh, FMCG approved, and then it is also laboratory approved. And we have the advantage of smart packaging in which the packaging is traceable for both the customers and also the brands in which the content inside of it is ensured the quality. We also strive to always improve and develop our system to be in context with the market needs. Next. And so let's talk about Kios business model. Kios is the B2B2C in which FMCG leases our machine and then in every liter sold, this is the distribution of the margin. So first is for the FMCG to provide the product and then also for the dealers to reach the customers and ask Kios for the solution provider. So this is how Kios make the business sustainable and financially stable. Next. So we talk about FMCG and also dealers, and this is how we poise to grow bigger and faster. Kiosk North Star is to make refill system normalized within the society. And to make sure that happen, we need to make the system as easy as possible to be adapted by the customers. To make that happen, geographical expansion is really crucial for us to make the solution reachable to every customer and within this year we have already in talk with 200 more dealer inquiries and three national retail chains other than that product selection is also important for us to tap the existing market and in this year we have already in talk with five international and national fmcg partners with 10 brands already in place to be launched anytime soon next and so the question is who is kios customer well, we really want our customer to be inclusive, but from our learning, we found out that the persona that we are focusing now is the sustainable conscious customer and also the uh, price sensitive customer that is lived in the urban areas. From here, we vision ourselves that in five years, we will cater to 2 million households for, for, by Kios. Next. 
And so Kios has already validated this idea into testing a pilot in one apartment in Jakarta for one year. And in that one place, we have already 300 and more customer based in which 31% of them has already returned for raffling. And we have already prevented 1,800 more plastic pouches avoided. And within this just one place, we see this as if we scaled up the market and also the product, the impact will be in greater scale. Next. And so this, uh, what we're going to do in the two years is that we will open up to more 50 funding points and more FMCG products. Next. And so meet the team. We are a group of engineers, design researchers, and also business experts that is so passionate and impact, and we are part of NVU. Next. And so we need you to funding and also collaboration with us kiosk to accelerate the impact of tap, closing the tap of plastic waste, and together we can make Raffle Revolution happen. Thank you. Thank you so much, Debbie, for the wonderful presentation. I think that's the seventh uh, to have. We're still going to have another five startup finalists who's going to present their pitch decks. Before we go into the break, uh, may I have some of the uh, comments or feedback? Hello, judges. You are you're pleased to open your microphone. Anyone wants to have? or probably impression or curiosity what about Ibu Nita any comments Ibu Nita well I'm very impressed with the ideas and then uh, how uh, they can actually contribute the sustainability of our planet yeah however of course some of them still need to um, maybe uh, make a stronger case uh, for their businesses. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Ibu. We have five uh, startup finalists here, yeah? What about Mbak Valencia Dea? Any comments so far? Yeah, uh, it's exciting to see uh, different solutions across different, you know, ch uh, tackling different problems. Um, I'm also it's also nice to see that they speak very slowly, so it's easier to understand. Um, I think for feedback, uh, I would love to see for some of the, 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 the um, speakers beyond the top line, beyond revenue, would like to see the gross profit, would like to know when will they break, break even, which is something that's very important for us. I also like to give some context, for example, like for example, if you say you help reducing certain amount of tons of plastics, like how many percent that is in overall plastics pollutions that we generate. So like for some people, it gives us more contacts. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Valencia. What about probably I'd like to hear a word of two from Marcel. Uh, yeah, thanks. Um, wow, what a what a high pace. I, I'm struggling to keep up all the notes, but uh, but yeah, it's it's uh, it's it's great so far. Um, different different topics, different uh, uh, solutions to problems, as Valencia is saying. I think what is uh, um, uh, as a, as a way of feedback for me is also uh, understanding the numbers a bit better. Uh, sometimes it's not entirely clear where a company really stands if it's already revenue making or or um, or not. And I think that's interesting for investors to know. And and um, from an impact angle. Uh, um, uh, I hear a lot of solutions to problems, but I, I know that some of the solutions may create, may, there may be, let's say, um, negative effects as well. I just, just an example, if you bring something sustainable to the market for a specific brand, that may increase the brand awareness among customers, and they may turn back to, let's say, the non-environmental friendly solution. So it's, I think in the pitch deck, it's always good to be critical on also the negative side of your, or the potential negative side of your impact. Thank you so much, uh, Marcel, for the uh, a word of two. Now I'd like to ask just one quick question to the rest of the judges. Is five minutes enough for the presenters to present? Masano, do you think it's enough? Oh, they need to learn in five minutes. They need to convince many stakeholders, including investors, in five minutes. What is your business and what? Wh why we need to support you? 
uh, I, of course, after the five minutes, there is a follow up question like uh, uh, Budea said. Yeah, that's uh, the typical of investor question, but that's important. They they need to prepare that. But uh, pitching the idea in five minutes, that should be enough. That should be enough. Yeah. What about Mbak um, Atika? Do you think five minutes is good enough? It's a perfect yes. timing. I think it's a perfect timing for the first initial pitch, right? Because the rest of the conversation will be after this. So use this five minutes to like grab our attention, convince us as the first impression. Thank you. First impression matters. What about Mas Nor? Do you think five minutes is enough? Yeah, I think it's enough because I think uh, uh, in five minutes is a, it's a crucial time, right, for everyone. Uh, to highlight all the things that related or all the things that are uh, important. So I think, yeah, the time is good. Thank you. I think we have heard from the judges. Uh, we're going to have a break time for 10 minutes. Uh, so we will be back again with the presentation startup after 10 minutes. So timer here uh, on screen. We, we hope that you can just stay connected and then we will be back after 10 minutes. Thank you so much, everybody. I'll see you in 10 minutes.
Welcome back, everybody. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you for uh, still being with us until the, we're halfway through the pitching sessions with all of our 15 startup finalists in the Demo Day of Circular Jumpstart Incubation Program 2021. Now, before we go, uh, before we proceed to the next presenter, uh, the eight uh, startup finalists, I would like to see probably some reactions from the participants. I can see that we have now, let's see how many participants do we have here? Like around 83 or oh, 100 something. Can I see some reactions from the, uh, from the audiences? Are you guys still excited? If you're excited, probably you can, oh, can we do some feature here? Probably, okay, comment on the comment box. You can also introduce yourself or your community that you're representing or the company, or probably you're an investor interested in some of the um, uh, climate tech startups that we have today. So please introduce yourself. Please uh, make the best use of the chat box section uh, uh, as your networking platform. Thank you so much. Uh, once again, I think we are ready to go to the next presenter. This is the eighth startup finalist. I would like to give a warm welcome to Robris. This is Robris. It's come from a trash. Indonesia, the second place most produced trash to the ocean. Robris make a revolution. Bring new perspective about plastic waste and trash. So in the end, what is damage our planet, what we call waste, doesn't really become a waste. We turn it into something valuable. Make your home beautiful. We can create another innovation. To prosper the people around the world and save our future environment. Hi everyone, I'm Niam from Robdis. So Robdis is where we turn plastic waste into valuable product. Next, talk about plastic waste. We already produce 490,000 tons plastic waste and they have nowhere to go. Next. So Robris is here to provide circularity in plastic waste. Collaborate with Bank Sampah and Scavenger around East Java. We process and bring plastic waste back to the customers in something useful and fit their need. Next. From our process, we create a new material which already certified as non-toxic material. You can use it for unlimited possibility. Next. Or you can buy the product from our collection. Next. Or you can customize for your own style. And you can use for your business needs or even, and it's durable for indoor and outdoor use. Next. Knowing their trash can be something that they need, some of our customers start to change their habits to spare it their own ways, even asking their partner or customer to move together for a better living. Next. Now, our customers separated in Indonesia and overseas, and we believe we have huge opportunity in the future. Next. We charge 60 to 70% of margin in each product. From this business model, we, we can incrementally grow since 2019. Next. Now, we already reached almost $60,000. It's equal to 20 tons plastic waste, equals to 40 million bottle caps comes from our uh, collaborate 
community and customers. Next. To our customers, we always give a better product in good design and good quality product. Next. And with our growing team, we believe we can keep growing and provide sustainable living for many people around the world. Next. They have belief in our vision from being our customers, now they being our partners. Together we can reach bigger market in Indonesia and with space available, we prepare to enter worldwide market from London, Bangkok and other country around the world. Next. So to feel, fulfill and prepare for worldwide market demand, we need $70,000 uh, investment to expand our production capacity and develop our production technology. Next. So we welcome you who have same vision. So together, let's providing sustainable living with robberies. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much, Niam from Robris, for the wonderful and brief presentation. Now I would like to welcome the next startup finalist. Please welcome Plus3. Garrett Nelson once said, the ultimate test of man's conscience may be his willingness to sacrifice something today for future generations whose word of thanks will not be heard. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Putri Amalia from Plastrid with our tagline, everybody can recycle. Next. As we already watched in the video, there are many reasons that prevent Indonesians from recycling. The micro reason is we don't want to store our waste. Who wants to store their waste? We always want to throw it directly. Many public places, commercial areas haven't had any proper waste management practices for their own waste. They only think about moving their waste into landfill without considering the environmental issues there. Plastrid is merely focused on plastic bottle waste. Why? Because plastic bottles are literally everywhere. The recycle rate of polypropylene and PET is also high. And in this 2021, the demand for plastic bottle is increasing. Let's think about what we can do. So people can throw their waste wisely with no minimum quantity. And the public place can be responsible for the waste also to increase the recycling rate in Indonesia. Please next. Yes. Reverse spinning machine is the solution for the current waste problem. Recycle instantly, everywhere, every time. With this reverse spinning machine, it can convert plastic bottles into pills, which already meet the requirement for industrial manufacturing. And we, Plastrid, already process the claim for intellectual property for this solution. Next. This reverse spinning machine is the catalyst for the circular economy in Indonesia. We are sure we can make such impacts. Since portrait can be a dynamic changing of recycling behavior, support manufacturers to implement EPR, and support research and development by supporting four SDGs, which are sustainable cities and community, responsible consumption and production, climate action, and life below water. Next. We can recycle 405 every day per machine instantly, which are perfect to be placed in a building, street, and parks. Please next. Yeah, here is our business model. Plastrid will send 
our reverse vending machine to our targeted customers to be used by bottled water customers around. We will give incentives in the form of points in the mobile app for plastic user. Please next. We have four target markets, which are local governments, which own many public places and areas, supermarkets as the shopping points, FMCG manufacturers as the bottled product producer, and schools and universities, which have many people who drink bottled water. Next. We are currently focusing on educational institution consumers with the total service addressable market as 894,000 US dollars lies on the green universities in Indonesia. Please next. Plastrid is seeking an impact investor which can be a partner to achieve a sustainable world. We currently need 100,000 US dollar as our kickstart and will be used to enter the market. Please next. We, plus your team, gender balance team, believe that our small team can change the world. I am Puji Amalia, currently pursuing my master degree in industrial management in National Taiwan University School of Science and Technology, strengthened by Aziza, a business consultant, engineering student, and also uh, Nur Amin, a product engineer, also a product design lecturer. Please next. Let's change the world together by having everybody can recycle. Thank you. Thank you so much, Putri, for the wonderful presentation from Plus Three. Now I would like yeah. to invite the next uh, uh, startup finalist. Please welcome Tara FP. Only 0.7% is recycled material, are often dumped and burned. So far, it is no solution. What you wear may give you an impression of who you are. Hence, we should commit ourselves to become a responsible consumer by giving a new life to your past clothing you are giving hope for our mother earth to breathe through an upcycling process as a contribution to the circular ecosystem in the fashion industry by creating one of one apparel this is a win-win solution for your needs and our environment. Designed for the future, yet made from the past. Okay, hello ladies and gentlemen. I am now showing up in your screen to talk about clothing. But before that, let me introduce myself. My name is Anissa Putri Sadenur and I'm the co-founder of Turn Ways Into Fine Taste. TWFT is a sustainable fashion brand creating one-of-one -one products through an upcycling process. We are here as a solution for the future of fashion sustainability by aligning Indonesia's market needs and our environmental goals. Well, next please. Well, clothing. When we talk about clothing, we are talking about fashion. Fashion is about prestige, social life, and it's about our identity as a person. Just take a look at yourself. It has become a part of our lifestyle. Based on the data shown on your screen, nowadays people are starting to buy more than what they need. Likewise, Textile manufacturers are trying to align the demand by producing more and more clothes. By the end, we are looping on the same problem and creating a phenomena as known as an overconsumption and overproduction. Then, what about some people that want to change their lifestyle into a slow, slow fashion? <laughs> I guess not, because nowadays, sustainable fashion is more expensive. Next, please. So what can we do about that? We DWFT try to align the market needs and our environmental goals by means of closing the loops. We have upcycled product as a part of innovation in sustainable materials creation. And we also provide a disposal site for any individuals, local brands, clothing confection, or manufacturers who wants to be a part of circular system. Their fashion waste can be used and sold again. So we could decrease fashion waste that comes from the effect of overconsumption and overproduction in the fashion industry. 
And last but not least, of course, we would offer our valued product at affordable prices in support of the nation's economic sector. Next, please. This is our Upcycle Products collections. We design it by showing timeless and genderless designs that fit our Indonesian market. Next. This is how our circular production system works. We create one product by utilizing the fashion waste efficiently through combining sorted and unsorted materials instead of making a new with a, new, a linear system. And yes, because we are in the fashion business, our products development will be more sustainable because we can be more agile and flexible to the trends that keeps changing over time. Next. For TWFT, our early adopters encompasses fashion enthusiasts within the age range of 18 until 35. These fashion enthusiasts cover 41.9% of our market. Next, please. And we will reach through them through digital platforms by marketing campaigns and collaborating more with KOL and influencers. Next. Well, when we talk about market opportunities projection we are talking about a broad market size it's because fashion is one of the primary needs further narrow from urban millennials and gen z with a digitalization strategy we projected we could reach our available market at 1.7 million for our users next please from a business model perspective we will take 100 percent until 150 percent from cost of goods on each upcycle product and 30 percent from resale of the raw materials waste by the end, according to the revenue stream, at 1.7 million of our users, our projected word revenue will be at 646 billion rupiah. Next, please. These are the founding members. We are three eager women who are highly enthusiastic about creating changes in the fashion industry with our own expertise and experience in our respective fields. Next. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, we are kindly seeking for a collaboration with local brands or any stakeholders that have the same vision and mission in sustainability. And to secure the production chain, we will be glad to have a willing gauge. Moreover, we are also seeking 112 million rupiah for our operational costs regarding the disposal site, because we do believe that the cost is for the greater good of our environment. Next, please. And last but not least, we believe upcycling fashion needs to be considered as a creative solution. We know that this is not simple, but with the collaboration, investment, and our team's creativity, reducing fashion waste in Indonesia is an achievable goal. Lastly, we design for the future, yet made from the past. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Tereafte, for the presentation. Now, uh, before I go to the next uh, uh, startup finalist, also to give some time for our judges to uh, do some scoring. I would like to see if anyone here in our audiences is actually supporting a specific startup. Please uh, uh, type uh, the startup's names uh, in the comment box. Which startups are you supporting right now? I'd like to see some, you know, supporters. Maybe, ah, there are some from, I'm sure there are a lot more. Okay, uh, everyone, please continue uh, uh, in the chat box, the conversation. Now I would like to continue to the next uh, startup finalist. I would like to give a warm welcome to Surplus. Sampah makanan adalah masalah besar bagi kita semua. Juga menjadi salah satu faktor yang mempengaruhi perubahan iklim dunia. 13 juta metrik ton makanan terbuang per tahunnya di Indonesia. Ini sebanding dengan 500 kalinya berat monas. Padahal, makanan-makanan tersebut bisa untuk memberi makan penduduk miskin di negeri ini. Terbuangnya makanan paling banyak dilakukan oleh hotel, restoran, catering, supermarket, dan gerai retail. Tentunya, hal ini tidak boleh terus terjadi. Maka, aplikasi surplus hadir menjadi solusinya. Di aplikasi surplus, kita bisa membeli makanan yang belum terjual sebelum waktu tutup sehingga tidak terbuang sia-sia. Harga makanannya selalu diskon 50%. Jadi, kita bisa makan nikmat, hemat, sekaligus menyelamatkan lingkungan. Buka aplikasinya, pilih, bayar, dan langsung ambil. Bisa juga pakai jasa antar. Tunggu apa lagi? Download aplikasi surplus dan jadi ikut resiro bersama-sama.
Um, hello everyone, my name is Almond Sabutra, the founder and CEO of Surplus. So we are a social enterprise that focuses on B2C and we are trying to take, tackle the most important problem, including food waste and food loss issue in Indonesia. That's why our tagline is Safe Food, Safe Budget and Safe Planet, because it represents our win-win solution or benefit either for the customer or for and for, for the merchants. Next. So we started. We start from here. Uh, around 13 million tons food is wasted every year in Indonesia, according to EIU 2016. That's why they put Indonesia as the second food waster in the world after Saudi Arabia. And according to the Bapenas 2021, it's uh, around 39 billion US dollar worth of wasted food per year. So it's a really, really huge uh, financial loss that Indonesia received so far. Next. So. Uh, we are actually filling the gap by uh, enabling food retailers or hotels or supermarket or restaurants or even farms to sell their overstock or imperfect products at the window time at home price to the customers. So we wish by doing this action, we can uh, uh, reduce the overstock product that uh, that's still edible and good that can be uh, be eaten rather than end up in the, in the level and become a food waste. So ne next. So this is our early adopters that uh, currently we are operating in Jabodetabek, Bandung, and Yogyakarta. So it means that our product is um, uh, scalable and our early adopters is around 18 to 35 years old. And all, all of them are from our women and their occupation are students and employees with their income less than 138 to 414 US dollar per month. So it's mean that we are targeting the low middle income. Next. So this is the huge market size and huge, huge opportunity because we are uh, the pioneer of this industry. So our market share projection is more than 50% and our target market consists of eco-conscious consumer and price-conscious consumer. Next. Uh, speaking about the competition, uh, our unfair advantage is as the first or pioneer in this industry. While growing a robust community, we assure that we can reach wider market while achieve our social and environmental goals. And additionally, uh, our potential competitors are still in the um, uh, idea stage. Yeah, next. And if you're wondering about our uh, growth, so we re receive like a, a huge demand, huge uh, positive response from the market because uh, the average of our growth is 70% per quarter. Why? Because our go to market strategy is the right strategy, uh, including B2B collaboration, um, student ambassador program, CSR, um, endorsement, and the most important thing, community engagement. Next. So uh, in terms of the business model, we take around 10 to 20% of merchant revenue as the revenue sharing. Next. This is the core team. I have more than three years experience as environmental consultant. Uh, we have advisor from the Cartex Group, and we have two key employees that has more than three years experience. So we assure that uh, this is a great team that can solve the food waste and food loss issue in Indonesia. Next. So in terms of the traction so far, uh, we have more than 9,000 apps download in just one year. Our CLTV around 60 US dollar per customer and our AOV is around four US dollar per purchase. So uh, imagine if 9,000 customer times four US dollar per purchase. So our revenue will be 36,000 US dollar per month. So it's going to be a huge uh, revenue as well. Next. So in terms of the partnership, we have been partnership with 600 merchants. Uh, they are consists of restaurants, bakeries and cafes, hotel, great food and good food haven't reached the hotel market yet. So it's, it's going to be a, a huge opportunity for, for us. And there's a supermarket catering and food retailer or SMEs as well. Next. And in terms of the impact that we have been generated, around 3,000 meals, or that's equal 450 food that has been rescued. And we have prevented around 2,200 US dollar in losses for business owner. And also we have avoided around 14.4 tons of CO2 from the landfill. Next. And in terms of the cost and revenue projection, uh, based on our calculation and estimation, we will receive the BEP in the next 3.6 or 3.7 years. And we are trying to exit, exit plan in the next four or five years, starting from 2021. Thank you. 
Yeah, that's all. Thank you, Agung and Serpuas, for the presentation. I would like to move forward to the next set of finalists and please give a warm welcome to Ecoplast. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Gabriel Buter Buter from Ecopass ID. The problem of plastic waste. Uh, next. The problem of plastic waste is becoming an important issue today. Uh, now there are 275 billion tons of plastic waste produced worldwide. This problem arises from the use of plastic material that are not environmentally friendly. It takes about 1,000 and 10,000 years to be degraded. And also plastic material like STPE, LDPE, and polystyrene, it's hard to be recycling. Next. The part will be the pop and bioplast and eco foam, which is bioplastic from agrarian industry waste, that is all empty fruit benches and cassava pulp waste. And these are product for shopping bag and substitutes for styrofoam. Next. Uh, next. This uh, experiment, uh, the probe for our bioplastic product, uh, available when ex uh, next when exposed to sun with certain media for several days, our product are properly degraded compared to conventional plastic, which have no change at all. Next, in addition, our product are combustible when in the media the soil can be degraded for less than six months uh, and doesn't poll pollute the soil. Next. This comparison uh, of uh, the environmental impact of our process with conventional process, where we reduce CO2 by 15 times and save energy by 7 times compared to conventional one. Next, from the market itself, the projective market value of the world bioplastic industry is around 65.6 billion USD in 2022, according European bioplastic. And some countries, especially Indonesia, in Jakarta, Bandung, and, and Bali, has been the use of plastic that is not environmentally friendly. This is uh, our opportunity with huge market. Next, we want to distrib distribute this, this product to our customers, such as food and beverage business, retail, consumer goods, company, and supermarket in Jakarta and Bandung. Next, next. Then we also export to foreign countries such as Qatar, Canada, and the Philippines. There are some of our clients. Next. We believe that our products are more sustainable and affordable than our competitor. Next, because we use raw material from under to less waste and are not food materials such as bioplastic from corn, cassava, and potato, our material will not interfere with food balance in the future. Plus, our product have high tensile strength with mass capacities about 3 until 5 kilograms. And also, we want to give a social impact to farmer by taking our material directly from there. Next. This is my tip. I am a major in chemistry, while my CMO is doing majoring in management, as well as in R&D. This is my friend from the physics engine major. Next, now we are spending around uh, one billion USD for the proper product, the legal patent certification, and product finalization. Second, we need need to commercialize our product to mass production, and uh, last, we need to build our sustainable and friendly friendly brand. Next, we start this eco plus since the end 2019 and 2022. There are already prototype and the patent registration. We got funding from NWO, Netherlands Organization for Scientific Research last year, and the Ministry of Research and Technology of Republic Indonesia this year. After all, patent and legal conditions are safe. This year, we focus on seeking fund for to prepare for conversation of our product so that they can be mass produced. And are now targeting customer appreciation abroad and within the country. By 2022, we hope that our Wipro plastic product will be ready for mass production in large quantities and we want to build our own factory. Next, last but not least, at the Copas, we have dream. We hope that in the future, we will not have to worry anymore that uh, the, the plastic we use every day will pollute our earth. And through our innovation, we hope that it can be solution to the current plastic waste problem as an alternative solution to plastic material. Next, 
paste it and think, thank you. Thank you so much, Ecoplast, for the presentation. We're almost at the end of the pitching session, but we still have three more startup finalists who are going to present their pitch decks. So I would like to give a warm welcome to Bali Recycle Up. Hello everyone, this is Bali Recycle Up. Next. Bali is well known as the Thousand Temples Island, where 3.2 million of Balinese Hindus community conduct the ceremonials every day. And at the end of the day, it generates temple waste, which is directly disposed to the landfill without any treatment due to the insufficient waste management facilities. And in other words, there's around 4,700 temples in Bali, which are also the cultural icon of Bali Islands, become the contributor of the landfill waste. And according to our research, one single ceremony can generate about 300 kilograms of temple waste in one day in one temple. So you can imagine how much stones will be generated from all temples in Bali Island. So about 80% of temple waste are discarded flowers and leaves, and the leakage of the temple waste bring the bad impact for the environment, such as water pollution and land pollution. Responding to this issue, Bali Recycle Up aims to apply a circular economic model to design a sustainable waste recycling to the temple environment by converting the discarded flowers and leaves into organic incense for non-worshipping activities. Sakar is our first brand organic incense. It made local community contributes to the temple environment preservation, 100 organic and all local materials, circle free and semicolon free, and then zero waste packaging comparing the other incense in the market. Next, next, next. On our mission to ensure the temples are no longer a contributor of landfill waste, we continuously working on the future innovation product made from temple waste, such as vermicompost, biocoal, and plant medium. Next. In terms of market size, our demand is driven by home fragrance market size in Asia Pacific and Bali's attraction for wellness tourism. Accounting for the impact of COVID-19, we anticipate the serviceable tenable market to be 1.2 million US dollars. Next. We market Sakar to individuals who like to do yoga at home as daily use, yoga class, and software shop. We expect that Sakar can become an authentic souvenir from Bali Island by bringing the brand story of creating the harmony between the culture, environment, and society. Next. Look at at our five years milestone, we are planning to commercialize the car at the end of 2021 with a pilot project and community empowerment. By 2023, we are targeting to handle 70% of temple waste in Bali Island by replicating this project and leading to our five years goal of establishing a recycling center in the island. The business plan will rolling out the project from one temple to another, and we are expecting about 15 public temples in Bali are included in the first year. Next. Our attraction so far is we have secured partnership with a public temple in the city named Duya Anyatana Club Temple and also got customer feedback from trying of our product to improve the quality of our product. Next. As a social enterprise, we are concerned about the reaching out the impacts of our project to the environment and society. By replicating this project, we are expecting about 230 public temples and 4,000 700 community temples across Bali Island are initiated to manage their waste, and we estimate nearly about 40,000 tons of discarded flowers and leaves are expected to be recycled per year. 
We are also empowering the local community to get involved in the initiative to increase their economic and environmental awareness. Next. As an early stage startup, we are continuing to scale and improve our startup and looking for expertise and investment to provide us with a scaling capacity, such as the scene to produce better quality of the incense and a membership for sustainable circular business and funding about 50,000 US dollars. Next. Our team is coming from various expertise. I'm Imadu Bayuijaya as the founder. I have PSC in environmental engineering and concerning on waste recycling. We have Andrew as COO, having high experience in human resource management. We have Hamza as a CTO, has experience in IT fields with eight years. And we have uh, Dia Padrina as our great social media manager and Bauzia Damayanti as our R&D and he has experience in community development. Next. So this is Bali Recycle App, connecting centuries of Balinese culture with modern day sustainability practice. Thank you, next. Thank you so much Bali Recycle App for coming from all the way from Bali. Thank you for the presentation. Now moving forward to the next uh, startup uh, finalist, I would like to give a warm welcome to Grow Cycle. di keluarga kami sampah-sampah yang masuk dikumpulkan di uh, grow cycle. Papa yang ini sampah basah itu saya pisahkan ke sini. Kalau yang sudah penuh hmm. nanti diganti sama emer yang bersih. Jadi senang lah itu. Ya ini di sini sangat bersih sekali ini. Baunya nggak kemana-mana kalau ada tempat ini. Memang sampahnya enak membuangnya juga nggak dicampur nggak basah. Bisa mengurangi sampah dari TPA. Terus ada ada ininya bisa bisa membuat anak-anak uh, juga jadi bisa teredukasi secara tidak langsung. Pemilihan sampah ini menjadi menjadi apa ya? Menjadi sikap hidup. Ya alhamdulillah lah. Hmm. Dikarenakan ada sampah ini jadi di rumah tuh selalu bersih. Hi, we are Grow Cycle, a waste pickup service using special bins to make sure people separate their waste, specifically those living in densely populated urban housings or kampung kota, just like in the video you just watched. Next. We are educating our users to reduce and segregate their waste by separating organic waste from non-organic waste. Cities can reduce the landfill problem, prevent infectious disease, and maximize recycling. Next. However, only half of urban households separate their waste. The common reason is that they don't think it is necessary or they just don't have the means. Next. This is how we educate our users. Our solution is to bring up waste and environmental issues as their personal health issue. The bin has informative stickers to nudge healthy and sustainable lifestyle. Surely the stickers messages is not enough. Next. So we collaborate with community health workers in the area to educate our users. It's their duty, and we provide extra incentives for it. Someday we will provide them with living wage. We need to bolster their potential in preventing people from getting sick because hospitals are full with COVID patients. Next. So here's how it works. Users put organic waste inside the bin, trade the bins with clean ones during pickup. Organic waste will be processed in our composting units in the neighborhood. Non-organic waste will be collected by nearby waste banks or bank sampah. The community health workers will provide guidance to users on better waste management while making their rounds. Next. The subscription fee is affordable to those with low purchase power, a group that are growing in this pandemic. We include subsidies and donations-based packages. Plus, there's discounts and bonuses like locally grown produce to reward consistent waste separation. Next. The revenue combines subscription and sales of compost and other goods. We sell portable composting units and home gardening needs. Companies and brands can advertise on our bins as well. Next. Our service is embedded in local neighborhoods and targets low middle income households, of whom often less informed on climate issues. As for informal waste pickers, we ask neighborhood leaders like RT Airway to facilitate the collaboration. After all, we reduce half of their workloads. Next. 
Our total addressable market is 74.4 million urban households in Indonesia. But to keep it real, we are working to expand to 100 neighborhoods in Badong City this year in areas mostly affected by COVID-19. Next. The way forward requires for digitization. Think of Gojek, but to connect our users with the community health workers and the pickup team. Also, we are raising funds to help communities to build local waste processing units. For upscale in Bandung alone, we require 1.2 billion rupiah or around $80,000. Next. We are very confident with our capacity in engaging the neighborhood communities. Our academic careers shaped us into avid learners. But frankly, we need to connect with more business advisors. We would like to thank the Circle Jumpstart and mentors organizer for doing so. Because setting up Grow Cycle has been a call for action for us in years. Next. And the time to answer that call cannot be more relevant. We actually started off as a community development project, which goal was to mitigate health hazards due to pollution and urban lifestyle. But we are very concerned with the sustainability of funding in this pandemic economy. Next. Hence, we shifted our mission into building healthy and sustainable communities using our pandemic resilient business. We hope to build productive communities that takes care of their own health, their environment, and grow their own healthy food. Community health workers are designed and trained just for that, but lacks the fair incentive system. We set up local waste processing units to support that system. Next. So our business is an education on household waste separation and, re and reduction, like plastic and clothing as well. Not, not only for the sake of the landfill or cleaner environment, but ultimately for the sake of our own health and personal well-being. And we provide the simplest means to start, a special bin to separate organic waste in our homes. Do let us know if you have similar mission. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Sozar, from the Cycle for the wonderful presentation. Now, last but not least, I would like to welcome the last startup finalist. Please welcome Diola. Hey, have you noticed recently the frequency of natural disasters has somehow increased? The mass rapid spread of one particular disease and the fluctuation of economical global even make us struggle. How if I tell you that those problems coming from the way we treated our foods, would you believe me? And here's a fact. According to our word in data.com, those problems are mainly caused by the one boring topic called greenhouse climate change, produced by methane gases and surprisingly, 26% of it are coming from our leftover foods. Yes, our foods are organic, which is easier to dissolve, but sadly, it is not correctly maintained. They all are combined together with unorganic waste in the landfills, which then be the result to those problems. Well, rest assured, the Ola is here. We do all fields. Sorting waste is not a pleasant thing to do, but with us, it becomes like magic. Let us find out what we are talking about. Hey, not bad. We're not mal. Hey everyone, my name is Alvi Fikri. I'm the co-founder of Diola. Diola is a startup that offers smart organic waste management to tackle food loss and food waste. Next. There's a fact that 60% from our total waste is organic, and Indonesia is the second largest country that produces food waste. Can we even be more proud of this? Of course we can. How these problems begins? In fact, that how many of us are using sorting bins or sorting our waste? Let's do, but mostly don't. But in reality, even if we did, that those wastes are mixed again in the dump truck and ended dumped in the landfill. So it will produce methane gases that are very harmful for our environment that cause global warmings. Next. So here are solutions by utilizing bioconversion method using black soda file larvae. We can convert organic waste into two products that is larvae itself as alternative feed and the fertilizer for the crops. Our system divided into two systems that is pick up service using PSF cultivation and second using Diola pins that is on site system. Diola pin integrating IoT device and larvae that will help larvae to grow their performance in order to reduce the waste inside the pins. By doing Diola pin, we can have convenient waste sorting, don't produce smells, and also less transportation fee need and cost. Next. 
So here's our tilapin. Our capacity reduction is up to 25 kilograms per day with tilapin. And we can have 10, we can have 25 kilograms maggots and 30 kilograms fertilizer every 10 days when we harvest it. Next. Here's our workflow. How do users use this bin? Actually, the user just put in the organic waste inside the bin, then it will it automatically will processing it. So every 10 days, we will refill the larvae with a new one from our insectarium stations. Next. Here's our, where we get the revenue. We get revenue, we're targeting 50% of margin from every device you have been sold. And the other revenue is come from our end product that is fresh maggot, fertilizer, then end dried maggots. Next. Here are markets. We're targeting pay to pay market mass customer that is rest area, residence, middle up, private and government institutions, hotel, restaurants. By doing so, we will secure 35% of this market from the Tiola beans. Next. Here, one of the case example in rest area when we're using Tiola bean. We can saving 42% of cost transport maintenance in the rest area. Next. By Tiola beans with the other competitors, we have more reduction capacity up to 25 kilograms and faster reduction reduction time less than four hours than the other competitors. Next. Here our positioning in, in our startup between the other competitors with the same industry. If the other competitors have only daily pickup service in Tiola, we have two that is Tiola pickup service, every daily pickup service and also on-site processing using Tiola beans. So with the beans, we don't need to pick up to waste daily. So it's more effective to reduce or solve this kind of problem that is for loss and food waste issues. Next. So here our marketing strategy, acquisition, direct selling, internal marketing, offline activities, online advertisement for conversion, free development trial, free pickup service, gas and credit payment options. As retention, we use discount product rewards and new features. Next. Here's our traction so far. We are recomparing with Utama Karya, one of BUMN that we will implementing their dual in, in their rest area in Trans Sumatra Tolls Highway. We have two BSF installation and we have one dual pins. And so far we are already converting 80 tons of organic waste. Next. So here we have a strong team that have experience on it to focus on calls. Next. Here's our roadmap for this quarter. We will focusing on implementing our developing in all of the rest area in Trans Sumatra. And then we will focusing to spread or expanding our product and also our production of the beans itself. So to reach to our goal next, we need 16,000 of dollar investments to, in order to reach that goals. Next. So here I'm from the Tiola. So we did we did hard our we did hard our experiment. So it's our responsibility to fix it together. One of it with Tiola. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Alfie from Diola. Uh, it was the last uh, startup finalist that we will uh, that we have seen uh, today. So we have 15 startups in total who have presented their uh, pitch decks uh, wonderfully. I think. Thank you so much for uh, the, the presenters representing your own uh, startup. Now I would like to welcome uh, the panel of judges. The sixth panel of judges must be Jaksana Junai Rosano, Mbak Atika Benedicta, Ma, Bapak Marcel Newtel, Mbak Valencia Dea, Ibu Maria Nindita, and Mas Normedia. Welcome back, judges. How is it going? Uh, any comments? or anything interesting you found during the presentation from our 15 startup finalists? Maybe from uh, Masano, any comments or interesting uh, thoughts from you? I lost your voice. Uh, maybe the other judges first. Okay, other judges first. Uh, anyone would like to volunteer maybe before? <laughs> I asked somebody. Okay. Let's see from uh, it's it's on my screen. The, the 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 one on the left up is Ibunita. Any comments from you, Ibu? 
<laughs> yeah. Well, <clears throat> again, I'm impressed with all of the great ideas uh, from young people and then their uh, motivation, you know, to really uh, save the planet. But I do have some inputs, if I may. Uh, it's, <clears throat> I think uh, all of them need to uh, really consider the sustainability of the supply. You know, how can they maintain the sustainability of their, uh, like supply of uh, raw material or maybe eco-friendly materials, yeah? And also, uh, they need to focus on certain uh, products, you know, not uh, aiming to uh, to big, um, you know, variety of products. They need to be able to explain to the future investors that uh, in this near future, we are going to focus on these products uh, so that uh, you, uh, the investor understand who will be your um you know uh, segment market segment and then in that way you can start uh from the lowest hanging fruit you know and then uh, also the last one is uh, they need to be able to convince the investors the investors how can they maintain the production cost or operational cost once their customers are increasing you know uh, so how can they, for example, operational cost of uh, picking up the buckets, for example, that one of the the um, the idea, and then also uh, maintain the customers if once the customer is, uh, you know, getting more and more. So thank you, Ma. <laughs> thank you, Ibu, for uh, the comments. I think uh, this uh, is not only for uh, certain or specific startups, but it's pretty general when they offer a service or product, make sure that it's uh, focused, not too broad. And then, because maybe uh, in the future, you will have some difficulties in um, determining your market. Thank you so much, uh, Ibu uh, Nita, for uh, the wonderful feedback. Uh, now I'd like to welcome uh, Marcel. Any comments from you? Are you satisfied? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm definitely satisfied. Uh, again, another interesting round of, uh of ideas and innovations. Uh, and I think one of the observations that I have is that um, some of the solutions are very technically oriented. Um, but what I'm always interested in is how do they really serve a, a market need? And maybe uh, in some of the presentations, you see that there's a comparison made to, let's say, other competitors in the market. But quite often, what you uh, deliver is also, um, let's say, uh, replacing something that's existing in the market. And, and how, is, how are consumers actually willing to, um, yeah, to trans transfer to your product? In some cases, uh, and when it's about um, waste management, in some cases, uh, people simply burn their waste. How do you convince uh, a consumer to actually pay for a better solution? Um, I think, in, yeah, that's, that's uh, I think, in, interesting to address and also for investors to see if it's really a sustainable long-term solution that customers are willing to pay for. Yeah, I think that's my, uh, my short uh, comment here. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Marcel. We really appreciate that. So uh, this is also uh, for the founders. Please think of the long-term goals. Yeah. If, if previously Ibunita mentioned, please not to, uh, make sure that it's not too broad. And then Marcel said, please think about the long term. So please take notes. I think we still have four more uh, judges who is going to give the their uh, feedbacks. So founders can take notes on that. Thank you, Marcel, once again. Um, uh, Atika, any comments? Yes, so first of all, congrats for the founders. Thanks for presenting your um, innovation, right? So it's really exciting to see how you present the ideas and also like the reasons why you started this. But maybe like just some feedback. Um, this is like overall feedback, not for certain um, founders. So first, make sure you have time to elaborate your team because at your stage, this is like a very early stage. What we want to understand is why you are the right person to run these wonderful ideas. So I, I saw that in most presentations, it's just like a quick side on that. So make sure later you spend more time to convince us why you started this idea and why you work with your team for that. And then the second point is about the um, 
positioning. So um, most of them are really broad, like compete yourself with the bigger players out there, but maybe the user persona is really niche and maybe you need to like dig deeper about who are actually playing in the same field. Because it's good to see like yourself from the high level market, but maybe in the first one year, you need to focus on a certain niche and just be specific on that. So yeah, that's positioning and also maybe uh, the team side. Thank you, thank you, Matika. So if I may conclude, um, uh, background story is very important, especially when your business is about, uh, it has social impact because it's really important for, uh, let's say the investors to see if it really, if your business really has a social impact and it should be pictured in your pitch deck, even though it's only five minutes pitch deck, Masano earlier mentioned that you have to learn, <laughs> you have to be able to reflect it uh, within the five minutes. Thank you so much, um, Mbak Atika. Now I'd like to move forward to Mbak Valencia. Any comments from Mbak Valencia or feedbacks? Um, yeah, I think general positive um, reaction is that to see a very diverse set of models in the market. Um, in terms of feedback, from impact perspective, if you're, I would like to, I would like to get get it elaborated more. So, for example, if you say you are tackling plastics, or like you're recycling plastics, is it PET, is it SGPE, is it PP? Because like different type of polymers have different. Um, the current set is different, like PET is already more mature than the others. Technically, it's, it's mostly recycled already anyway, so why, why would we, we tackle that one, for example? So to really understand which polymer is it would be very helpful for us. Um, also, like when you talk about it's biodegradable, it's compostable, like in, in what kind of setting to give us context. If it's in natural setting, that would be great. If it's industrial composting facility, then we don't have that. So like then, so like just just for us to understand like exactly how what's the, the environment settings needed for this kind of um, solutions that you're having. Um, from the financials business perspective, some of these technologies are already something that is being done in, 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 in the different markets. I know that. So it's 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 proven technologies. It's a matter of reach uh, reach reachability. So like how how actually you're, you're going to, to reach the market and make sure they want to adopt your, your product is, is more important for me. Um, that's one thing. Another thing is like, in terms of break-even points as well, um, some of the, these businesses are not like heavy infrastructure businesses. It's not uh, deep tech businesses. It means that if you, it will be great if you can um, shorten, shorten down the break-even points more, because if you're talking about three, five years, it means that you're burning money for the next three, five years. And just to be aware of that means that you have to keep continuously fundraising for the next three to five years. And just to know, like, is it really the pathway that you are trying to go or not? It's just to be more conscious on that. So those are the main thing. I think the last one is on the pricing and the target market. Just to really understand who, if you're targeting low, low market, is that is the pricing that you're having is actually a fit for the, the, the low segment? Because like, for example, the retribution fee for waste is like between 5,000 to 10,000 rupiah per month right now, and not everyone is paying. So if you are you know, increasing it by double, three times or four times, um, would that be something that is acceptable by the market? So I think that's uh, the main one. Thank you, Mbak Valencia. That's pretty detailed, uh, especially when it comes to your uh, financing and then um, the way that you're going to develop your um, uh, finance. So I think it's a very good note for the founders here uh, to, to uh, take into account and probably rethink whether or not you have described that pretty well in your presentation. Thank you so much once again, Mbak Valencia. Now I'd like to uh, move forward to Mas Nor from Zendet. Hi Mas, any comments, feedbacks, or probably impressions? Yeah, I think, uh, uh, first of all, I think everything is being great, right? So the presentation is good. The materials that have been presented also, I think, quite uh, innovative, right, for everyone here. So I think thank you for that. But uh, for me, actually, I only wanted to highlight two things. So first one is how uh, all the participants can highlight the value proposition for the businesses, right? So I think I do, and ideally, everyone has their own uniqueness in terms of the uh, businesses on how to to address that as a unique selling point, right? But I think 
how to communicate that unique selling point is something that need to be improved. So we are clearly catching what are the things that uh, you wanted to offer, whether the uniqueness is from the product side or it's uh, from a business side or the uniqueness from something else. So I think that's, that's uh, the first thing that I want to address. Second thing I think is more to like, uh, maybe if it, it will be great if uh, everyone can also uh, check in in terms of the competition landscape because I think not all the things are related there because I think uh, to be realistic as well, we also need to know and understand whether uh, these businesses can, can survive. I think like not, not only in the, in the short term, but it should be a long term, right? So I think something that took something related to the competition also need to be addressed correctly. So that's all for me. Thank you so much, Mas Noor. So it's about a unique selling point. Unique selling point. Uh, I feel, uh, I, 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 I believe that some of our uh, startup finalists, they, they are very unique, especially when it comes to uh, environmental uh, you know, uh, issues. I think they, they, they highlight that, they focus on that. But whether or not they can highlight their selling points during their presentation is uh, another question. So thank you so much, Mas Nor. Uh, I would like to uh, go back a little bit to Mas uh, Sano. Uh, but first, let me check Mas Sano. Can you hear me well this time? Yes, I can okay. hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, very clear, Mas, very clear. Okay, any comments from Mas Sano? Yeah. From this 15 uh, finalists? Yeah, the most important thing what ecosystem uh, want to do and also circular jumpstart and uh, giving you the opportunity and the platform to share your story, to share your vision and to share your strategy to solve the problem that you want to solve. And I do realize that everyone have very unique uh, selling point and also uh, approach different kind of approach. Uh, some uh, several of them already have revenue uh, several of them uh, ideation uh, on the pattern or the research uh, base so the most important thing that you can learn each other uh, so we create this ecosystem for all of you uh, to share your knowledge and the discussion because environmental is a common threat and common problem that we need to solve together i believe if we can do the sdgs number 14 partnership it will be very important. Uh, I do not have any feedback for all of it because uh, everyone is very unique. Thank you. Thank you so much, Masano. A very important uh, thing to note, SDGs number 14, yeah, uh, about uh, partnerships. So I think I can also see in the chat box that some of the participants or the audiences have introduced themselves, wh where they're from, from which industry or their background. And I think some of them are already, you know, getting to know each other. I'm pretty sure that the session might be over, uh, but the relationship should uh, be more robust, I think, especially when it comes to uh, the environmental issue. I think it should be a movement so everyone should move together to really make it happen otherwise the circular economy uh, is is a little impossible to happen unless we do it together thank you so much uh, for the uh, feedbacks uh, judges thank you also for staying with us and giving your um, scoring before we really uh, end the session i would like to have just a few minutes with the judges uh, i'd like to know what do you think about circular jumpstart itself like this incubation program is i think uh because we focus on environmental and for this year's um uh, theme is the circular economy uh what do you think about that and how how do you feel that uh this incubation program can uh, support the climate tech startups especially those who are in the early stage startups maybe i'd like to hear some comments from marcel first yeah, I think, yeah, sorry, I was on mute. I think uh, what I really liked was the diversity of uh, topics and diversity of uh, founding teams as well. So, um, uh, yeah, and truly startups, huh? there was uh, uh, a mix between, let's say, ideas and, and uh, about go-to-market uh, solutions. Um, yeah, and uh, I think the, the, 
Uh, obviously, I haven't seen how the, the two months process has been with these companies, but as I've said also previously, I think uh, the the way you have been able to um, to create a, a group that is uh, that is really uh, a, able to to provide these high uh, quality uh, presentations, high quality decks, that's uh, that's quite good. So um, yeah, I I think I uh, I can congratulate you on this uh, on this program, and I. I really hope, and I, I do think that uh, some of the, the ideas that are presented here today uh, could uh, could really be around in the next few years and, and hopefully really scale. Thank you, Marcel. Thank you so much. Um, any words from Amba Atika? Uh, so to emphasize like the role for this early stage um, entrepreneurs, right? I think by having you in the ecosystem, it's really great like to foster the innovation because like the good thing about startups and also like the entrepreneurial approach is like you are agile, you can move fast. So I think like it's gonna be your perks to really work on what solution that that is needed um, in the market. So yeah, just leverage that um, privilege while in the other side, like this ecosystem players, like ecosystem and the other support system and investors also trying to work more to have a better support for the whole ecosystem in this sector. Thank you, Mba uh, Atika. Uh, what about Ibunita? Any comments for the program itself? Yeah, I think this is an excellent program and uh, because uh, it is very complete, yeah, where you not just provide the opportunities for them to, to do the pitching, but also you provide them with mentorship. And uh, this is also very professional. And then I'm very um, keen on having it to be continued and uh, replicated, you know, uh, and also, uh, this is in line with the uh, definition of sustainable development, which is development that meets the needs of present without compromising the ability of future generations in meeting their own needs. So I just want to congratulate uh, all of the team. Thank you, Ibunita, for the warm congratulations to the finalists, because basically they're all winners. They're they're selected over, uh, from over 100 uh, uh, registers. So they're selected, this 15, uh, they're selected from uh, over 100 uh, startups who have registered in the, uh, in the program for uh, in, the per in the first place, excuse me. So they're already winners, basically. Uh, so yeah, congratulations to you guys. Um, next one, maybe Mas Sano about the program. Yeah, agree. Uh, this is really needed for Indonesia uh, to set up the ecosystem uh, of a climate tech entrepreneur. And this is our first uh, attempt uh, to gather ideation. And we hope in the future we can gather more ideation, more startup, and also we can collaborate with another uh, organization, even uh, financial institution that uh, shaping this ecosystem together and foster the solution of uh, environmental uh, effort uh, to decrease the carbon and also develop uh, low carbon development in Indonesia. So thank you again for all judges, for all supporter, and also for all the finalists. Uh, good luck to all of you. Really appreciate it, uh, Masano. Thank you so much. It's all about ecosystem, and that's what we're creating here. Um, it's an ecosystem of uh, mentors coming from different backgrounds. We also have the startups uh, coming from different, um, uh, offering different uh, solutions to uh, environmental issues. And then uh, uh, hopefully, uh, with what Ibu Nita mentioned before, if we can go bigger, uh, if we can grow bigger, we can also. Um, uh, welcome academicians and also uh, other institutions such as uh, financial institutions, the ministries, and the governments as well. Thank you so much. Um, um, Valencia, Dea, any words for the program? 
Yeah, I think first of all, I appreciate the, the event organizers um, that are able to show diverse set of pipelines in, in these competitions. A lot of time when we have a very specific team in a certain competitions, the pipelines or like the companies that, that attend the event are very uniform. So it's, it's nice to see like a very different type of models and solutions in the market in one event. Um, I think, I believe that this kind of program is very um, valuable. It's, it's key because like a lot of the time, investors might not have um, visibility of this, this illicit startups and also like your presence can help them to fine tune their business so that they are more investable for investors as well. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, um, Valencia. The last uh, judge, um, maybe from Masnor, because Masnor is from different uh, business uh, unit, different uh, industry as well. Any thoughts about this uh, uh, program? Yeah, I think first of all, I would say a really, really a good job from, from the events organizers, right? So this event, I think is a quite a big success. I also uh, wanted to uh, say thank you because this is the first time joining this kind of event and seeing that there is a lot of things happen in not only in from uh, what we are seeing from the financial sector, right? But it's also from the climate sector. I think this is a great, great opportunity for us to share. Great also opportunity also for us to see how we can innovate to making our uh, environment be a better place, right? And also, I think this is a great momentum uh, for all the uh, startups that participate today because uh, as we know that health and also climates, that this is the two things that everyone cares about or concerns about right now. So I think uh, I will just say uh, success for everyone and yeah, use this opportunity to fly more higher. Use this opportunity to fly higher, said Masno. Thank you so much. Thank you so much uh, to uh, all the judges. Uh, if I may conclude all the comments from the judges, it's about uh, because our theme uh, this year is a circular economy. It means that it needs to be circular. Um, everyone has to take parts. Everyone has their own very important roles to play to make it really, really happen. So thank you so much once again. The highest, um, my highest appreciation to uh, the panel of judges. Uh, I think after this, the judges uh, may leave uh, the Zoom room because they will have to deliberate and discuss about uh, the result. Um, we actually uh, have reached the end of the session, but before that, I have several uh, important announcements. So uh, from the 15 startups, uh, you may have questions, some of you may have known, some others may have not known, but they're actually trying to win uh, a competition. So uh, for this competition, we will have uh, top three winners the 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 winners will be announced tomorrow on friday uh july 23rd during the fourth indonesian circular economy festival or ICHF 2021 so please make sure that uh you are there to really witness yourself who is actually winning the competition and um the prize for the winner is the 50 50 million rupiah grants plus in-kind supports from Zendit with value up to 140 million rupiah. There's also an in-kind support from Zendit with value up to uh, 140 million rupiah for the second uh, and the third winner. We also have a video competition on our social media on Instagram. Some of you may have liked the videos uh, from the startup finalists that you support um, the, the announcement of the, uh, the winner of the video competition will also be announced tomorrow. So make sure that you attend um, the, the last day. I'm, I'm sure it's the last day of um, iChef 2021. Um, you may register yourself in case you haven't. You may register yourself um, by clicking through the link in the chat box. I'm pretty sure some our team will uh, put the link there. Register yourself. Um, it's actually just a small part of the whole day event. So there will be uh, other uh, sessions, thematic sessions that you might be interested in, in participating. So make sure you register, you register yourself. That's it. Um, I would like to thank 
uh, all the panel of judges for coming again today, for participating and contributing. I would also thank uh, the finalists, the presenters who have presented your startups and for the two months uh, that you have uh, been involved in our incubation program. Thank you so much. Uh, and also for the mentors, uh, thank you for your guidance. Uh, thank you for your support to our uh, startup finalists that they have, uh, that now today they are able to present their best pitch decks in front of the judges. Uh, I would also like to thank all the audiences who have come here, tuning in both from Zoom and from YouTube. And also um, thank, uh, we would also thank uh, Kementerian Hukum dan HAM, Republic Indonesia, uh, FNF Indonesia, Climate Institute, and Zendip for the continued support. Once again, thank you so much, everybody. My name is Denisa, and this is the end of the session. Thank you so much. I'll see you again tomorrow during the announcement day. Thank you.